What you guys got another video here for you on how to block remote access software sites. Now this is not a foolproof method, but it is a way of blocking things like TeamViewer, uh, Amri, and also AnyDesk and any other type of uh, remote software. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to be using our router to block these websites. Now this doesn't stop the person from downloading uh, these uh, software from a third party site and that is the problem here but if you want to try to block these and help say someone who's vulnerable then this video is for you so let's open up the command prompt and run this as administrator here and type ipconfig we're going to need to make sure that we get our uh, router ip address once you've pushed enter you should see your default gateway here this is your ip address for your router and uh, once you've got that, you can type that into your browser. So let's go ahead and do that. You will need to have your uh, username and password to log in. And if you don't know where that is, it's probably on the bottom of your router here. You'll see the IP address is on there and also your username and your password. If you have changed this and you've forgotten it, you will need to use the reset button to reset all this back to default. And then you can use your default password and then change that once you get in. So let's go up to the top of the browser here and type in our IP address for our router. In my case, it's 192.168.1.1 and then push enter. You will see the sign in window come up and this is where you can put in your username and your password. Now with Netgear routers, uh, you can actually uh, use the routerlogin.com here which is uh, for for me anyway so if you've got a netgear router you can probably do that so i'm going to type in the username and the password here and then push sign in this will give me access to the actual menu system so open that up and once we get this open uh, the display will open up here and what we want to do here is we want to go straight into our settings here especially for this particular type of uh, router but yours will be in there somewhere so you need to look around okay so we're going to hit settings and then content filtering and what this is going to do is allow us to filter some websites so we can block uh, websites here so block sites as you can see click on this one and this will open up this uh, little window here and we can see here it's set to never so if you want to block these now say for instance you've got someone who's elderly or someone like that who doesn't understand this you can get all of these urls and paste them inside here you can put it to always and add the keywords in and this will be the domain names for those websites so i've got a bunch of them here now unfortunately you have to add in only five at a time so you just have to go through in groups of five and add those in and it will block those websites now if you use these websites then obviously you don't want to block them but this is for people that are vulnerable that are acceptable to go into the website and typing in that url which would have been instructed by one of those tech support scammers so you can add those in and then click add keyword and you can see they're starting to build up now what what this will do is it will block that particular domain name so when you push enter you'll see website blocked by netgear firewall and this is important especially if someone is vulnerable and someone has instructed them to go say to team viewer or something like that and they type that in and of course it will be blocked now they will find ways around this and uh, this is the downfall of this method because there could be a file which they've uploaded to another server where they can actually give them the link to that file to run inside the run box which is what they sometimes do but it's just a, a little safety net to give you uh, you know a little bit of a safety net for uh, the domain names which they could send you to so it could slow them down a little bit uh, with this method again this is not a foolproof method but it is a start and again you can add these in you can also add these into the host file which would block these as well on the computer so if you wanted to do that you could add these into the host file and if you can get hold of the ip addresses you can block those as well now firewall software and also antivirus programs can block this type of behavior from these sort of sites but the problem is a lot of people that use antivirus programs will end up 
uh, having problems downloading and running remote software. And some people want to run it because they're responsible and they know what the risks are and uh, they are pretty clued up, whereas some people can't uh, be trusted with this sort of stuff. And it is a good safety net. Now, you can delete one key at a time if you want to, or you can remove them all by just clicking clear list. And this will basically uh, set this up. You can put it to never and apply it and it will remove all of those websites and they should reload. So it's a good way of blocking um, sort of sites like this or even unsavory sites which you might want to block uh, from your children, young children and stuff like that. It's a starting point and there is loads of places where you can uh, get these types of domain name lists from, especially for adult sites and stuff like that. But we're talking about uh, remote access software sites here. And again, there's loads of these about on the internet, but this is a really good way of starting to block those, okay? Now, you would have thought in 2020 that we would have had some sort of easier way to block these remote access software sites and also the software itself to stop people from abusing it like tech support scammers that will, uh, you know, remote into people's computers. If we could find an easier way of doing this, it would help a lot of people that are vulnerable to this type, type of attack. Now, this is not a foolproof way. It's just a basic way and crude way of blocking websites. But there is ways around it for the more intelligent type of, uh, you know, IT guy. He will soon work a way around that. But anyway, that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope this one helps you out, guys. Have a great weekend and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.